The PGA Show, held each year in Orlando, Florida, is an opportunity for manufacturers around the world to showcase the latest and greatest equipment. But before any of this equipment goes from the manufacturing facility and into your bag, it has to come here first, the USGA's Research and Test Center. This is the first step in the process receiving, and this is Shannon Kane. She's the one that first sees the clubs as they come in from the manufacturer. Most of the information that she sees on this club, she'll log into a database so that she can track it. The information is highly confidential since she's the first person to see it, and so we have to make sure that none of that gets out. That's why we use an alias for Shannon so that we don't have to worry about her being kidnapped. She's logging in all the data and det determining what tests are necessary for the conformance testing. This is the second step in the process where Jeff Banchansky takes some preliminary measurements of the club and also takes a picture of it for their records and documentation. Drivers will actually use that picture on the conforming list. These clubs are on their way to the next step in the process and that takes us right through the USGA's main test lab. Here we test more than 2,000 clubs any given year as well as 1,250 brands of golf balls. This is a single piece of equipment that's the coolest that we have. It's the mechanical golfer. Here is the first step of testing golf balls. We find out their launch conditions and determine how far they fly. Now we're gonna measure the grooves in the face of this club. Every club has to have its grooves measured except for drivers. Paul will put some rubber compound in there and create a mold and we'll determine from that after we scan it and to determine whether the grooves are too sharp or too wide or too deep and from overall conformance to the rules of golf. Now on to measuring the volume of the club. We have to make sure the club is not too large, either in volume or in head size from the heel to toe. Brian's in the process right now of filling any cavities to make sure we get a true measurement of the volume. He'll dip it into water that's sitting on a scale. Water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter, so when it reads 400 grams, that means it's a 400 cc club. This is called Archimedes Principle. After the volume, we measure the size of the club head. We measure from the front to the back of the club, the sole to the crown, and the heel to the toe. Sounds easy, do it with the ruler, except the club head is so odd shaped, it makes it a little bit more difficult and we have to use this sophisticated piece of machinery. Looks good, Brian. Now we're on to the test for the spring-like effect, also known as the test for the coefficient of restitution, test for trampoline effect, and the characteristic time. Basically what we're trying to do is measure the speed of the ball as it comes off the club face to see how much extra energy the club's imparting to the ball. We do that by hitting a pendulum with a ball-shaped knob on it against the club face nine times and then determining how fast it comes off. This is where we measure the grip on a club. Very few people realize that we actually measure grips and that there are rules on them. Uh, what we have here is Jim's measuring the grip both translationally and rotationally to determine a 3D picture of it to make sure that it doesn't have any features that would make it molded for the hand so you can put your hands in the same position every time. Also related to the size of the club head is its moment of inertia. That's the club head's resistance to twist. For a golf club, it means more forgiveness when you hit it off the heel or the toe. The best analogy is if you watch ice skating, you'll see a skater start a pirouette and with their arms out, they spin very slowly and when they bring them in, they speed up. What they've done there is lower their moment of inertia. This test just slowly oscillates the club and we determine what frequency it oscillates. We have to do it at nine different points because we don't know exactly where the center of gravity is of such an odd shaped club like this. The tests are all complete, the paperwork's done. What happens next for this piece of equipment? It's time to put it away. This submission now joins over 100,000 previous submissions, both clubs and balls, dating back more than 80 years. This gives us a historical archive that we can look back if we ever need to reference it in the future. And now you've seen how we test a golf club for conformance to the rules of golf. So whether you're playing a friendly round with your buddies or in a USGA championship, you know that your club conforms and you're playing by the rules. Stop back in a couple of months and we'll show you how we test golf balls.